Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to combine Excel tables with Power Query. And we're going to look at how to fully automate this process, which will save you a ton of time in the future. So for this particular example, we have Excel tables on each sheet within this workbook. Each table contains some order data, and we want to combine all this together to, or stack it on top of each other to create one long table. This is called an append in Power Query. So there are some prerequisites here before we do the setup work. And one of those prerequisites is that each of the sheets needs to contain an Excel table, or each data set needs to contain an Excel table. So you can see on this uh, sheet here for Andrew, this is not yet formatted as an Excel table. So to do that, we're just going to select any cell inside the data range here, go to the Home tab, and then Format as Table, and just select one of these styles. So click that. Uh, on this uh, pop-up here, we want to make sure it just says My Table Has Headers checkbox is checked. And then we'll click OK. So that'll insert a table. If you haven't used tables yet, I do have another video that explains how to use tables in more detail. I should also mention that I'll make this file that I'm using available for free download. And I'll put a link to this in the description below this video so you can download it and follow along. So once all of your sheets have tables, the next prerequisite is that all of the column headers within each table will need to be the same. They don't need to be in the same order, but they do need to have the same name or the same uh, text within each of those column headers. So if they don't, for some reason, you can copy the column headers on the first sheet and then uh, paste those, select multiple sheets even, and just paste uh, those column headers so that they're all the same on every sheet. Okay, so next we're going to do the setup work in Power Query. And this is work that we only need to do one time. And once we do this, we will fully automate this process. And at the end of the video, I'll explain how to update and refresh the data. So we can just select uh, one sheet here. Just make sure you have one sheet selected. Then we're going to go to the uh, Data tab on the ribbon. And if you're in Excel 2013 or Excel 2010, this will say Power Query. Power Query was a free add-in for those versions of Excel. I'll put a link to an article in the description below this video that explains how to install Power Query for those older versions of Excel. So we're going to go to the Data tab here. We're going to select a cell inside the table. And then we're going to choose uh, From Table or Range. And that'll bring up the Power Query Editor. And here we will see a preview of our data. So for this, we don't need to do anything yet. We don't need to make any transformations uh, or clean up this data yet. All we really need to do is create a connection to this table. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to go to the Home tab. And on the Close and Load button here, this is a split button. We're going to click the bottom half of this button and then choose Close and Load to. And that'll bring up this Import Data window. And here we want to choose Only Create Connection. So just create the connection. Otherwise, Power Query is going to create a new sheet with an output table. And we don't need that uh, yet. So we do, we're just going to uh, create connection and hit OK. And then you'll see over here uh, on the Queries and Connections pane, this will appear over here on the right side. And we'll see our new connection. Now at this point here, we need to do that same setup work for each table in the workbook. Uh, so we'll go to the next one, do the same thing from uh, select a cell here from table, and then close and load and create the connection only. So you'll do that for each sheet or each table in the workbook. Now if your workbook has a lot of sheets, that can take you some time. So I've created a macro that'll do this for you. Uh, and I put it here on my macros tab. I stored it in my personal macro workbook and uh, put a button up here for this. And I'll share this in a separate video on how to do this yourself and share the macro code as well in a separate video. But essentially, we're just going to run this macro. So I'll click that button there. This will allow, uh, just ask us if we want to run the macro to create the connections. Hit yes, and then that will create all of the connections in the workbook. It takes about two seconds to do that, depending on how many tables you have. And you can see over here on the right side, we have all of our connections created. So that'll save us some time. And now that we have all the connections, we can combine them or append them in Power Query. So we're going to go to the Data tab on the ribbon. On the Get Data dropdown, we're going to go to Combine Queries 
and then append. So again, this append is combining the uh, queries or stacking them on top of each other. And now we'll open up this append window. And here we want to choose three or more tables because we have more than two. And over here on the left side, we'll see our available tables. So one thing you can do here is just select the first one, hold shift, and then select the last one. That'll select all of them. Now, if you have additional tables in this workbook or additional queries that you do not want to append, uh, you would just not select those. Uh, and then once you have the ones you want selected, you can just click add. If you accidentally uh, add one that you don't want, you can click here and hit the X to unselect it. This is that one we added. I forgot to name the table, uh, but we'll leave it in as is for now. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. That will again load up the query editor and append or combine all of our tables together. And we can see that here if we uh, scroll over to the right side to our last table with the rep name. As we start scrolling down, we can see the rep name changes. So this is the data from the different tables in the workbook. So it's all been combined. And at this point, you can do additional cleanup work. So for example, if you maybe wanted to filter out some rows, uh, maybe with our payment type, when our payment type's blank or null, we don't want rows for that. So we could filter those out, just remove all of those, and do additional transformations and cleanup work here with Power Query. And you'll also want to make sure your data types are correct. So if you have any columns with dates or numbers, this example here, we'll want to change this to a date data type. Uh, so when we output this, that'll be a date in Excel. So at this point, our setup work is complete. And what we can do is go to the Home tab and we can click the top half of the close and load button. That's going to add a new sheet to the workbook and output our query table right here with all of our data combined. So now let's take a look at updating and refreshing the data. As I mentioned before, we fully automated this process to combine these files. If the data on any of the sheets change, let's go over to this sheet for Mariah here. Let's just say this order number changes here, or maybe we even get some new rows down at the bottom. I'm just gonna copy two rows and paste them at the bottom here. We'll just change these numbers here to make this uh, stand out a bit, something like that. Hit enter. And then now, if we want to see that data in our query, all we need to do is go back to that output table and anywhere on the table, we can right click it and click refresh. Keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. So when we do that, the query reruns completely and outputs the data to the table. So we can see that data here for the data we changed. We scroll down a bit. We can now see the new data here as well. Oh, and you'll notice we don't have the uh, 888 one, and that's because that row was filtered out uh, because it had a null value in the payment type. So that's why we're not seeing it in the output table. So the point here is that Power Query is going to completely replace the data, any existing data in the table when it does a refresh. So we're going to just completely replace that data. So if you do make changes to the data in the output table, that those changes will be overridden once we refresh this uh, table. And then one other maintenance piece you might need to do is adding new tables. So let's say we get another table here. We'll just change uh, or make a duplicate copy, hold control, drag to the right. And so we have a duplicate copy of this sheet. I'm also going to change the uh, rep name here just so we can see a difference in our data. Just copy that down. So now we have a new table. Uh, the first thing we'll have to do is create a connection again for this table. So we can go to data. We also rerun the macro. The macro will uh, create any new tables for us or new connections with new tables for us as well and not duplicate them. Uh, but what we'll do here is just let that load up and then we'll click the uh, top or I'm sorry, the bottom half of the split button, close and load to. And again, only create a connection there and we'll hit OK. So that's created a new uh, query here. You can see it's now table Nancy 15. And what we'll do is uh, double click that to go back into the Power Query editor in our append query. And here we need to include that additional table. So on the source step here, we can click this little gear icon right next to the source step. If for some reason you don't see the query settings pane over here on the right side, this can easily get turned uh, toggled off or closed. Go to the view tab and click the query settings button. This is the toggle that toggles it on and off. So we'll go to source, click the gear icon, 
and that'll bring up that original window where we uh, selected our tables. So here we have the new one for Nancy. We'll just select it, hit add. That'll put it at the bottom. You can also reorder here if you want to select that and move Nancy up to a different spot. You can totally do that as well and hit OK. And then that will just uh, refresh the query and include our new table. So again, we'll go home, hit the top half of the close and load button. Once we've already hit that close and load button for the first time, Power Query will not create a new sheet. It's just going to refresh the query on this existing sheet here. And now we'll have our data for Nancy. So if we hit the filter drop down here, we can see we have uh, Nancy and then Nancy Freehafer with her last name there. So we have both of those tables in our output. So there's a little bit of maintenance there if you're uh, adding new sheets frequently, uh, there might be some maintenance there. Otherwise, you have a fully automated process. And again, as the data changes, or if you add or delete rows within any of your source tables, all you have to do is refresh the query to see the results here. And then of course, with this uh, table, you can use this as a source of a pivot table or formulas to do uh, reporting and analysis. I have a whole nother video series on pivot tables and dashboards. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video as well. Definitely check that out to learn how to uh, bring your data alive and make very cool charts and interactive dashboards. So I hope this has been helpful for you and it saves you a lot of time with doing kind of boring uh, data cleanup work at your job. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you're putting this uh, technique to good use, let us know in the comments below as well how much time it's saving you. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.